Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Learning at Washington University. This is Module 2, Python for Machine Learning, Part 1, Dealing with Data. In this part, I'm going to just show you how to get the data from, from the course website and load it into Pandas. Then we'll see more advanced pandas in the next part. So here we can see my Jupyter Notebook working area. I have the course website here, um, all of the, well not the website, but all of the repository information from GitHub. I've also got a data directory and a notebook from, from the previous part. So let's look at the data directory because this is where we will access it. If you go into the course website itself or the course uh, material, I do have a data directory there and this is all of the data that we, that we deal with with this course. However, we, for notebooks that you create on your own outside of the class folder, you want to have your own data directory so that you can directly access them. So let me go into there. I put two CSV files up here just for the, what we're going to look at in this part. If you want to add your own, you can easily, you can just copy them to this location on your hard drive, or you can click upload. And maybe I want to add my toy data set. So I'll add toy one. And I just click that, upload it, and now you see it joins the other files. And now it's here for Jupyter Notebook to do. If you're using Jupyter Notebook in the cloud through IBM or something else such as that, then you, you will need to upload them. Otherwise, you can just copy them to your, to your directory. So what I am going to do here is now make use of this. Is let me go back to my um, sort of root Python area. I am going to go ahead and create a new Python 3 notebook. I will go ahead and give it a name because that's always a good idea. Now we're going to make use of pandas. So we're going to import pandas as pd. You'll often see this for pandas and this should work so long as you have pandas imported. You can also really quickly print out the version of pandas. Those are under bars. That's just a quick check to make sure that you have pandas installed. That version is perfectly fine. Pandas is not too sensitive of version numbers. They don't make a lot of breaking changes, so I don't, I don't really specify which version of pandas you need to use for this course. I am also going to import OS, which is the operating system utilities. This lets me do some handy um, capabilities, so I am going to just create path equals, that is the path that our data files are going to load in. I can now create a file name to read from that directory by doing a um, os.path.join, oh and that is not print, that is path, so that's meant to be a variable, path path and iris.csv. So what that is doing is joining that together. So if I just print out file name read, so if I simply print out the file name read that I've created here, you can see that it's, it's combined those together. What this is useful for is often for assignments, for the assignment for this, this module in fact, you should create a file name write and now we have both a reading file name and a writing file name so we'll later write something actually to that. But for now let's go ahead and we've, we've created this nice file name read that holds the, uh, the file name that we want to read. Let's go ahead and read it. So to do that, I will assign, I'm going to read a data frame using pandas. Okay, now I have read a, 
a data frame in from, from disk. I can print out that data frame with this. And you'll see that basically CSVs will print out in this really nice format so that you can see the, uh, the data that you're trying to actually access. If you want to narrow that down so you don't see as much, you can always do this. That says print out from 0 to 5. You can print out the data really at any location. That prints out nothing because now I'm going from 10 backwards to 5. Uh, but if you wanted to do 10 to 15, that would show you those, those data elements. Again, remember, Python always starts just short of the final um, value that you're actually that you're actually specifying. If you wanted to write this file, then you could also write it to the um, uh, to the Python or to the data directory that you've created. So we have file name write. We can also with this data frame. Now, if you want to save the CSV, which is something that you need to do for a, for this, the class assignment, because you need to upload your your CSV and your your source file. What you can do is do df.2 CSV. Okay, that doesn't appear really to have done all that much, but if we now go back and look at our data directory, we can see that we now have the output CSV file, which you can view as, as a CSV file. So you've generated an output file. That will be very similar to what you will do for the assignment for um, this section. You'll learn more of what you need to do for that in the next part. By the way, this index equals false, that is also very important. If you don't put that on, it will put, so if we look at output CSV here, notice it just literally starts right with the four um, measurements of the iris and its species. But if you did do this, if you didn't do that, it would put a row number in there for you. And usually we do not want the row number. So if I refresh this, now you can see this row number. Don't submit your CSV files for that. They're not considered valid. Um, and you'll lose points for having a row number in there typically. All right, that is basically just how to deal with the data directory and read files in and out. In the next part, I am going to show you a little more about how to make use of Pandas itself so that you can complete the assignment for this module.